Okay, welcome to part two. We're going to do some finishing on the outside of this Paduke bowl. Uh, I like to start out by using a cellulose sanding sealer. This one is cut anywhere from 60-40 to 70-30. Uh, it is not rocket science. It does not have to be exact. That's just about the uh, it's just about the percentage that I like to use. It seems to work well. I put on two coats of this allowing dry time in between each coat. Okay, next is a Tripoli compound. The particular brand that I like to use is Dr. Kirk's Scratch Free. It's a very, very green friendly, uh, no, no harsh chemicals, nothing toxic or anything in there. And um, the, the purpose of this is to smooth down the sanding sealer and provide a really nice buff. You really only need a very small amount in order to do this and it works very well. Okay, we've already got a great shine on this piece of wood. Uh, next up, we're going to use a friction polish. I prefer to use um, the Mylans brand. Uh, just it, it works well for me. I don't know why, but I have trouble with uh, friction polishes like uh, Doctor's Woodshop. I don't think there's anything wrong with the product. I think it's me. It just does not give me the results I want. Anyway, uh, first coat is hand rubbed, no power get a good coating on there you're not using a lot of product a little bit will go a long way rub it in nice and when you're satisfied with your coverage on the first coat let it dry and that's one of the keys to this whole process is letting your your coats dry in between that you don't want to rush into the next piece of the process And through the magic of video, the first coat is dry, and I'm applying, I think it was two more coats. Seriously, a little bit will go a long way, just a drop or two on a piece of paper towel. That's all I use. I use regular paper towel. I tear it into small pieces. I try to get as much usability out of every sheet of paper towel. The whole waste not, want not bit you know all of this stuff costs money so if you're looking at this from a manufacturing and production standpoint save yourself a couple of bucks per month ends up adding up to several bucks at the end of the year and if you end up becoming a world famous professional turner it could save you a lot of money down the road you know just by not wasting a bunch of paper towels just something to consider Okay, so time to take the work piece off of the chuck and uh, flip it around. We're going to change chucks here as well. The only reason is because the foot is a little on the big side for the jaws that I have for my Infinity. So we're going to switch to the Vic Mark 120 with the standard jaws. And um, again, I use it because it's a very reliable piece of equipment. 
uh, works well on my lathe, works well for what I need it to do, and I got a really cool set of five inch jaws that I can use on really big stuff. I'm not sure if you can see it, but the foot on this bowl is really short. There's not a lot of tenon to grab onto. Um, understand that you don't always need a full depth tenon. You need a good seat inside the jaws of the chuck. It's not about the volume of wood you're holding, it's about how secure your holding point really is. So if you have your tenon shaped right, if you have the dovetail at the right angle, if you've got a good shoulder at the base of your tenon, you really don't need a lot of wood inside the jaws. You just need a really good properly shaped tenon to fit into the jaws. So you can have, you know, you can have a small foot and still get the proper amount of hold. I don't have to make any adjustments. I don't have to tighten anything. It's on the chuck. It stays on the chuck for the rest of the turning process. And now we're just moving on to the hollowing. Uh, starting out with my standard large bowl gouge, I will use uh, my smaller bowl gouge. The big bowl gouge is 5 eighths. The smaller one, I believe, is a half inch. Uh, but the first one is a sorby, and the second one is a wood river. And every budget, everybody measures differently, so I don't want to quote something without knowing exact. This is my larger one, and the other one is not quite as big as this. And then I do um, a standard inside scraper, you know, round nose scraper. And uh, yes, yes, I do use carbide on occasion, and uh, we'll talk about that when we get there. In order to get a good flat surface on the bottom, 
and rounded sides and an inset side on the bowl. Uh, I'm using a combination of a standard scraper and a small round carbide scraper. This tool here is helping me get into that corner and then I can pull up the side because it has a, it has a slight it has a slight dovetail inset to it. So in order to keep my wall thickness the same, using this type of tool is working well for me. I don't use a lot of carbide, but every once in a while it really is the best tool for the job. Okay, done with the tools for this part. We're going into hyperdrive for sanding. We're doing the inside just exactly the same way we did the outside, and uh, it's 150 up to 600. And then I use the green and then the gray fiber pad, the Scotch Brite type fiber pad, in order to get uh, as high a gloss on the surface of the wood as possible. Now, the reason why we're doing that is. The quality of the finish of the finished product is completely dependent upon the quality of the surface of the wood before you start adding finished product to the surface of the wood. So we're not trying to make the finish cover flaws in the wood. We're trying to make sure that the wood is finished as well as possible before we add finishing products. Okay, and the last thing that we're doing here with this bowl is uh, I have reversed it back onto a set of cold jaws, and uh, we need to modify and finish the foot. So I'm using my smaller bowl gouge, and I think that's it. I think that's all I end up using on this. Yeah, smaller bowl gouge, get the shape that I want. Uh, I'm only running at about 600 RPM because that's the recommended speed for this particular type of jaws. I have it in expansion mode with the buttons on the inside of the bowl. Um, the shape of the bowl determines which way it needs to be held in the jaws afterwards, so uh, that particular way works best for this type of bowl. If I would have tried to hold it on the outside, I would have run the risk of scooching it out and uh, shooting it across the room as I tighten the chuck. Uh, that could have been kind of funny and slightly exciting, but bad for the finished product. Uh, we also run the sanding and the finishing in exactly the same way. I'll probably do hyperdrive in order to not bore you with sanding and finishing yet again. And then uh, there will be a picture at the end. Thanks.